and live in color. Well, Pastor Kenny and I have been friends, let y'all know, probably about 20 years since he came in from California, from the old Set Free Church up in Dahlonega. I used to pastor church over in the Highway. And my main focus, y'all, I want to tell y'all, before I go any further, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. Brother, would you open us up in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us all to gather here in your name. For you say we're two or three gathering in your name. You will be there with us. So God, we ask that you just lay your hand down on this church and allow Pastor John to just speak your word into our hearts. That is a wonderful Amen. 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 You know, y'all, I'm, I'm here because I love Jesus. I live up in Hiawassee, Georgia. And Pastor Kenny gave me a call. and Well, he didn't give me a call. He sent me uh, some kind of message on one of these phone things. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we communicated that way. And then I get, told him, here's my phone number. Give me a call, man. <laughs> but anyway, we talked about it. And he asked me to cover for the next two weeks. I am an evangelist. I speak all over the world. I have been traveling for the last 21 years by God's grace and mercy into prisons all over the world. And when I say all over the world, I mean all over the world. And uh, God's really blessed me to go into over a thousand prisons. He's put me with people I never thought I'd be running with. Oh, boy like me, I never thought I'd be running with Chuck Norris. Fran Tarkington. Some of y'all might know some of these old names, Fran Tarkington and everything. Well, he's going to be speaking at my house in two weeks. I'm having a Jesus Fest up there in High Washington. He's going to be speaking up there. He's 80 years old, but he still loves to testify of what God done for him. So uh, I'm real honored. Uh, I have walked by faith, not by sight, but by the Spirit, said the Lord. I tried running from God. Give y'all a little background on the man that's standing here. Uh, I was a sinner saved by God's grace. And I was full-fledged into it. I was in so deep that God really spared me. But it went through a lot of trials and tribulations. Until God told me, I've called you to be a disciple. I've called you to share the gospel. I have chosen you I say, why me? He said, because the least likely is who I choose. So that's who we are. We are the least likely. And he's calling us together for the final fight. I have studied this week and last week and the week before from two to fro and back and fro again. And he just changed my sermon just a minute ago when I sat down over there and took a little note. Why? Because the Holy Spirit moved me into worship and praise to tell me what he wanted today. Not what I want to say today. I can tell y'all, yes, I have walked through the valley of shadow of death, and I don't fear anything at all. I don't. I am not scared of anything Satan throws at me because my father covered me with the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, and that blood when he shed on Calvary, I felt like I was the one next to him that says, remember me, and he took him right up. There was no baptism went on for him. He went straight up with the Father to be in heaven. I can talk to y'all about the Bible. I can tell y'all what changed my life. And I'm going to do that first real briefly. What changed my life? I was raised a pastor's kid. My father was Dr. John M. Lance of the Southern Baptist Annuity Board. I happened to be from out of the mountains up there. But my dad was called to preach down in Atlanta in the late 50s. Uh, we lived in East Atlanta. I went through a lot down there in that era and time in the 50s and the touching on the end of the 60s but what God I'd ask God to come into my life as a young man at six years old I still remember what I did that day I remember the baptism I remember what went on that day people said well how do you remember it's just it was a special moment but what I remember most of all is after I come back out of service, Vietnam, Vietnam vet, so any veterans in here, thank you for your service. I appreciate all of you. Appreciate you. But what God did for me, I come back and I got mighty wild. I got messing with drugs. 
My uncle made some good moonshine up there in the mountain, so I, I messed with it. I'm just being straight with you. But what God did for me, they gave me a beautiful wife. She gave me two beautiful boys. June 29th, 1998, y'all, I was general manager class at Cadillac over in Dunwoody, Georgia, making big money. I was making in triple figures way up there. Right close to a quarter million a year with bonuses. But I played a game with a man named God all my life. Because I never thought I could be worthy to do what he was asking. Because everything that was spoken to me as a child, I became a product of what was spoken to me. So I recommend that you speak life into the youth today. Speak positive into the youth today. Because they're getting negativity from everything in the world, from facial book to Twitter beater and all them other things on, on them things, you know. So I ask that you speak life into young people. But what it took to wake me up, <laughs> excuse me, June 29, 1998, me and my wife had to make a choice. Our son was born. He had a bad heart and oxygen quit going to his brain. So June 29, 1998, this is what I go around the world sharing with people. And there's a purpose why I'm sharing this today. I reached down and I pulled a hose out of my son's mouth and I held him up in my hands. I said, Lord, let your will be done, not mine. Why? Because I heard my daddy say that all my life. I did not know what in the heck it meant until my son died that night. And I got real mad at a man named God. Because some of y'all in here have been praying and you feel your prayers haven't been answered. Who is man or lady enough other than me to raise my hand right now and say, I've been praying and some of mine ain't been answered? Raise your hand. It should be truthful. God knows our heart. So we can't hide nothing from him in here today, okay? Because he sits on the throne. And we're just foot stoops for him. But what happened that night after my son died, I got real angry because I'd prayed for him. The long time I'd prayed for him to be healed. And he did get healed, but when I prayed, Thy will be done, I didn't realize what I'd said until after he died, about many, many months after he died. And then my wife, she broke down, and it was real hard on her, and she broke down. A friend called and said, You hadn't had nothing to do with us, boss. Uh, you hadn't had nothing to do with nobody since uh, your son died. You sat in that fine house over on the mountaintop, and you ain't doing nothing with nobody. Bring your wife, come over here, and we'll have a couple of cocktails and shoot some guns. We had already promised God we wouldn't do it, anything anymore. Because we knew we, he got a free ticket to heaven. We wanted to go see him again. But we didn't know how to get there. I thought I did being a pre-ministerial major at Troy McConnell Baptist College in Cleveland. I thought I knew how to get there, but I really didn't have a clue. But what happened right after that, one of a friend's house, my wife took a sip of whiskey and she slid out of his chair started flopping like a fish on a boat she had a stroke at 34 years old after I around a few times come on come to come to my other boy said daddy will you pray for her I said no he don't hear me and I don't hear him that's what I said I said but he will hear a child's prayer I do remember that much and he said a prayer. He said, God, give me my mama back. I didn't get to play with my little brother. Give me my mama back. He gave her back to us. Well, think I would wake somebody up? No, not me. Hard head. Box of rocks. Fruity is a box of Fruit Loops. You just don't know what flavor box to jump back in with. And then all of a sudden, she went into work over here in Gainesville, Georgia at Hardy Chevrolet where she was office manager. She came home. She had this weird look on her face. She said, baby. She said, I got to tell you something. I said, what? She said, baby, she said, an angel come spoke to me while I was in the bathroom at work. I said, <laughs> I said, baby. I said, shh. I said, don't tell nobody this. Don't tell nobody this because they'll have you on the Jerry Springer show next week saying he'll be done hearing angels and voices, you know. All in the bathroom. 
while in the bathroom. I said, it's probably boys out the body shop just peeking down, baby. She said, no, it wasn't. It was a sweet, angelical voice, and it told me if I wanted to see my son again, I needed to know where he went. And you know I don't have a clue. You were raised in church. I wasn't. Take me to church. Oh, no, 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 no. I sat down on that one. No, I'm not going. Well, make a long story short, she told me I was. And she won that argument. And we went to a church. And the preacher asked how many people are husbands are workaholics. <laughs> My wife raised her hand in front of everybody, and there was probably about 500 people in this place back then, in those di at that time. And she raised her hand. I said, shh, shh, shh. I said, baby, you know my position in town and all the positions I hold? Shh, 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 shh. Don't put our stuff in the street. Anybody ever thought that about their own life? Don't put our mail in the street. Well, what happened that day? God, they were singing these songs that you sang today. These were the songs that were sung. Okay? I told you I knew. <laughs> yeah. Because those are songs, the inspiration that changed my life. Because he said if we lift him up in praise and worship, that's why I can't sit down. I can't be still. Because what God has done for me, after we went to church, the preacher said, how many wives and husbands work a holiday? He, he is, he is. I said, shh, 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 shh. Be quiet. And what happened? The preacher said, go spend quality time with your family. So I took my family. I said, where do you want to go? She said, to head a river. I said, baby, we live in the mountains. What do you want to go camping here for? She said, I want to go head the river, and I just want to be left alone. It's about six months after Jeremy died. Well, I knew I could go up there, and I could take me a bottle of whiskey up there. <laughs> And I'd be up in the woods and wouldn't bother nobody. So I took a bottle of tequila and some mix. Went up the river. And there comes a trout truck down the road. I said, son, we went to set up on Thursday before all the people from Atlanta come up there. So I said, son, there goes a the trout truck. Daddy's going to follow it down the road. And I'm going to throw out a piece of tape. And that way we can come back. We know where to get all the rainbow trout. We can have a good fish fry at our camp. So all I want to do was step, after I'd asked God to come back in my life, I just want to step over that line one more time. I didn't think that about the story about a few fish and a few loaves of bread fed 5,000 one time and fed 10,000 another time. I forgot all that because I'd lived in darkness so long that I was not able to see through the snake skin that was over my eyes. And what happened, I went up there and I, I said, Daddy's going to follow that trout truck down the road and you can ride your bicycle and I'll pick you up down at the bottom of the mountain. He had another boy on a bicycle with him. They just worked on his front tire. Make a long story short, folks, it got down the bottom of the mountain. My son didn't show up. Another kid did. They said, Mr. Lynch, your son had a wreck. I said, hey. I said what was he doing? He's popping wheelies. I said, just like his daddy, 1969 wheelie champion, Lakewood Flair Grounds in Atlanta, Georgia. I said, he's following after his daddy, just popping wheelies. He said, no, sir. When your son popped that wheelie, the front tire came off the forks, went to the ground, and bam! He had a granite face wall with his face. I said, well, tell him to get his fanny up by the road before somebody runs over him. He says, sir, my daddy said, your boy's dead. This is son number two. I cried out and I threw it in reverse because I couldn't back turn around on that log and road there. And as I went back up that road, I seen him laying in a puddle of blood, about six and a half years old, blonde hair, blue eyes just covered in red. And he was just scarlet, red with blood. And I turned around, I cried out, where are you at, God? I need real help today. Did y'all hear anything right then? I didn't. <coughs> I said, where are you at? Then I said, what in the heck am I even doing talking to you? My wife's had a stroke. My son done died. 
Then my wife had a stroke, and this is my second boy dead. I said, what in the heck am I even doing talking to you, man? You ain't even real. And I screamed out one more time. I said, God, if you are real, I need real help today. I said, where are you at? I was crying. I was in tears. I said, where are you at, God? And I heard a voice that says, I'm right here where you left me. I looked around, and there was no one in the national park. I looked around. I didn't see nobody or hear nothing else. And I said, no. I got to have real help today. And I started walking away from him because I didn't even recognize the voice of God. And I started walking away. And something pricked me in the heart and said, it's now or never. And what happened that day, ladies and gentlemen? God told me to get down and start praying over my son. And he said, if I would have faith of a grain of mustard. said, so tell everybody that I have got him in my hands that you come in contact with. And all you got to do is believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an hour and 38 minutes ride. We pulled into Helen, through Helen, and we got to the, over near Yonenberger. Some of y'all been up through there, know that area. Pulled into the ambulance. They said, DOA. I said, take him to the game. Take him to Northeast Georgia. I said, I ain't running no lights or siring. I locked him around the shoulder. He said, yeah, you will. He turned around. He said, call one man. I called one man. This old man called 66 people. As they opened the ambulance doors, a major gush of wind came in. My son's heart started beating. I turned around, I jumped out, and I kissed the ground. He said, remember the day I let you out of prison? You said you'd work for me then. He said, I've got special instructions for you. I want you to go and ignite my people to become my disciples because I've chosen the least likely to carry my word around the world from country to country, city to city, town, under bridges, wherever I send, I want you to go. I said, yes, Lord. I quit my job making over 225000 a year, and I just walked away from it. They called her, said, your husband has lost his ever-loving mind at being general manager. And... She said, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. I resigned from other organizations that I were part of, and I got clean from everything. And I said, send me. In 99, he started sending me. But it took breathing. I went back Monday to get six pins put in my son's jaw, 10 teeth wired shut. The x-rays go six broke bones, four broke bones, two broke bones, no broke bones. I've not worked a job since. I work for a man named Jesus that he can move waters, he can move mountains, he can make the lame to walk, he can heal the sick. He's still in that business. But he's called us all to be disciples. And right now in this latter time, we're fighting in a big fight of the world where the world's trying to, of darkness is trying to take over the light. But Jesus in John chapter 15, this is where I'm going to today. And I'm going to be bouncing in here a little bit because he's fed me so much. But he says, what I want you to do today, John, he said, I want you to ignite them into going out. I want that church to build. I have had favor over that set free church for years. I want that church to build. I want it to bust out of the walls. There's so many people in this area that need to hear the gospel. But we are not doing our part as servants and members of the body of Christ. We are not going out. I do have some things I'm going to leave with y'all today. And I'm going to make sure everybody has one. It's a simple plan of salvation. And if you share it with somebody, it does have a lot of pictures in the back. People that I, I've been running with for over 21 years. Most of them, you can find them in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they all work for a man named Jesus. It's not about claim or fame. It's about just being a steward and being a good steward for what God has called us to do. Out of John, and this goes hand in hand because, see, I was a vine that was not producing any fruit. And out of John chapter 15 is where I'm going to take the word out of it. And it turns around, and it's, I'm out of the King James Bible. That's what I preach out of. It says, John chapter 15, if you got your Bibles turned there with me, I didn't give it to him to put up on the board. So uh, that's my fault. I am the true vine. But I want y'all, if y'all need a Bible, get one, because I don't want y'all to take my word for nothing, because I ain't nothing but flesh, okay? I, this is what the word says, and this is Jesus speaking here. 
Jesus teaches about the vine and the branches. Now, I'm sure some of y'all have heard this. Many of y'all have heard this story before. But it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can do ye, except ye abide in me. In other words, he's telling us that we are the tree, of, he is the tree of life, but we're the branches, and we got to be out there producing fruit. We got to be out there sowing seeds. We got to let people know that God has called us, and we've got a special place here at Separate Free Church in Flower Branch, Georgia. We got a place of a pastor speaking the truth. He's not holding back punches. He's not putting sugar in water. I know Kenny for a long time. He don't water down God's word. He does not because the word stands on its own. And Kenny knows that as well as I do. And I'm so honored that God has chosen me just to be a vessel to be used by his kingdom. And then if you drop down, it says in verse 5, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth me and I in him the same bring forth much fruit. And without me ye can do nothing. So we can't do nothing on ourselves. but if we go out there and ask the Holy Spirit to go before us and we talk with bonus at the gas station, how are you today? I'm blessed. Let people know where you stand. And when you go to Krispy Kreme, as everybody here seems to love Krispy Kreme because that was a good night I had today. I ate it up in the microwave, but it was good. But every time you walk in how are you today? I'm blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. People said, well, aren't you in fear because you don't have a mask on? No. I have faith over fear. I have faith over fear of all this darkness that's going on in this world because God has told us I'm coming back. And he even had me back here. Mm. I'm going to read this part right here. In verse number 9, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And then he goes on down, and about 10 he goes on down, he calls us his friends. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. What a friend we really have in Jesus because Jesus is the one that we want to lift up today. I want to be fired up. I want people to be excited. I mean, Satan tries to deter us. He, the alarm didn't go off this morning when I was expecting it to because I didn't push save. You know what? That's just an attack from Satan. That's just an attack from Satan. I look at it that way. No, you lost. I woke up anyway. You lost the battle. I got the shower. You lost again. <laughs> they don't have to smell me today. <laughs> All right, now. In verse 18 out of 15, before I go any further, I got to read this because he told me to. Jesus warns us about the world's hatred. And right here it is. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated y'all. Come on. It's right here in red. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but, listen to this, I have chosen, everybody say the next word, you. Yeah. You. I want to hear everybody say yeah, you. Me. Everybody say me. me. He's chosen you and me to carry the gospel. He said, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore that the world hateth you. Yep. Remember the word that I said unto you. A servant is no greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute who? Yeah. You. Yep. They will. What are they trying to do to America now? They're trying to hold us down. They're trying to put shackles and chains on us. 
They think we owe somebody something. Everybody thinks they're owed something. We don't owe nothing but the Savior our life as far as to be a disciple to carry his word to the highways and the hedges and compel them unto him. That's what he's called us all to do. And you know, when Kenny called me and said, or, or facial booked me or whatever you want to call it, when he got in touch with me, I said, Lord, I'm not worthy. I work with all these bikers. All, I work with inmates. I haven't preached a sermon a long time. I said, and then I studied and studied, and I ain't even doing the sermons that I studied, y'all. Yeah. Why? Because he changed the gearbox on me, and we got to be flexible. Blessed are the flexed. And we got to be flexible to let God move in our life, to change our life. Just like this young man, he's got a future. He's got a kingdom future. And I've already seen what God showed me with the prayer that he opened with. He was not even the one I was pointing at to open the prayer, but the boldness of David come out of that young man. The David, y'all know about him? He went before Goliath with a little stone. And he pinpointed it. And it was on target. And he was a giant slayer. Son, you're going to be a giant slayer for a man named Jesus. He's got anointing on your life. I can already see it in you. He's got anointing and calling on your life. But you've got the hardest battlefield to fight in now. Not us with the age on us. Your battlefield's going to be tougher. But if you've got the full coat of armor of Jesus Christ on you, ain't no weapon against you shall prosper. Thus says the Lord, I am your God. Amen. And you know, that's the thing about God. He is such an awesome God. i, I got to check this because I'm not used to doing time periods. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, there's a big one back there. Okay, sorry about that. I got to duck down to see it. Here, let me just do this. Get on the same level with everybody. All right. You know, y'all, I'd studied in Jonah all week, really. I thought I would be speaking of Jonah's, Jonah. But every, all y'all about know the story of Jonah, don't you? Everybody in here about knows the story of Jonah and the whale, right? I see any heads bobbing. All right. I'm looking for bobbing heads. <laughs> Y'all, I'm pr like I said, never mind. I'm not right, I know it, but I love my Jesus. But in where I was speaking in Jonah and talking to the Lord about Jonah, he turned around and he kept referring me back into Revelation 2 and 3 and 4 into his word about him coming soon. I can tell by the age group in here, I don't have to tell y'all some he's coming soon. Because we see the signs, we have eyes to see and a mind to perceive. Because God has blessed us with that. But what he's called us to do in the latter days is to charge ourselves up. Don't plug into the 110 outlet. Go 220 and get your voltage up so you can be a lighthouse for them. Because the darkness is created is so bright now. And the darkness is trying to outshine the light. But it has no preference because we have the authority on the tip of our tongue right here. In the name of Jesus to cast Satan back to the gates of hell from whence he come. But we have to start practicing that authority daily in our life. We've got to let them see the joy in our life. I tell people the only plastic thing about me, no, I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> I tell people the only plastic thing about me and I usually take out a mouthful of teeth and tell them that's the real meal deal I'm going to get today. But what God's wanting each and every one of us to do is become better disciples. My question is today is what are each of you doing in your own life for Jesus Christ? Have you cut your candle power up? Have you, yes, you know that you're walking 
with Jesus. You know you love Jesus. But my question is, what in the heck are you doing for him? Are you really doing anything for him? Are you sitting like Miss Muffet sitting on her tuffet? You know? Are you getting up? Are you walking the walk? Are you talking the talk? Are you getting people excited and inviting them to your church and say, hey, we got something going on where it's just love and you will be loved and you will be fed. How many people are doing that? We've got to do it daily. That's our commission. If we've asked Jesus to come in our life as Lord and Father and Savior and friend, then we've got to start walking His walk and being imitators of Christ and letting our love shine. But see, it, it, in Revelation, I'm just going to touch bases on this because I don't want to mess with anybody's head if Kenny's been preaching on Revelation or nobody, anything. But You know, in Revelation chapter 2, it talks about the loveless church. You can hear about them on TV. The loveless churches. Send your money here. And we'll send you so many prayer clubs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. You got a church right here that needs to be fed. You got people right here in this community that need to be fed. What can you do for an outreach to help Pastor Kenny? Because see, the pastor always has a burden. That's one thing as evangelists. I can come in and say anything I want and get away with it. Because I don't have to be with y'all every Sunday. But Kenny, Kenny has to. This is where Kenny's been called. This is where God put Pastor Kenny when he left Alonica. This is where he put him. This is where the workers have been coming out to help with a vision that God gave him. And if we don't have people that are kingdom builders, then we can't have a church. You know, I'm going to tell y'all, since all this pandemic, the church I go to, we had just built a brand new church. Open it in January. Guess what happens? March. March. They shut the doors. But we met out in the parking lot. We didn't stop. And to God's praise, honor, and glory, uh, I think we've had about 138 decisions this year. Why? Because young people like that going out telling people. Go, people like y'all going out and saying, hey, come to our church. We got something going on. Get excited. You know, my job is to get you excited today and to make you better disciples, more want to be disciples, more, more elevated in your walk, in your talk, and your, your portrait, I guess you say, of the way we portray ourselves is to be joyful and let people see the joy that's in our heart through our eyes and through the love that he gave us for our smile. Because see, God's, God's given us this breath. I stand here with only a half a heart. I get 42 beats a minute out of my heart. That's it. And sometimes she'll tell you here a lot lately, it's tried to quit. But you know what? He keeps working it. He keeps working it. She'll tell you I have to lay down every day two hours. Can't make it through a day if I don't. He keeps working that hard. They said I would never be right. Well, I ain't never been right in the first place. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was a preacher's kid. You do this, Johnny, you're going to hell for it. You do this, you're going to hell. But see, God in Revelation, he talks about, in Revelation chapter 2, the persecuted church. And... And chapter 2 at the very beginning, the loveless church, the persecuted church, the lenient church, the compromising church. How many churches we got out there is compromising and they want to accept anything. They, mm, I'm going to say it. They want to put the crying right there with the Bible and say they're both equal. Hey? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Why? Because it's become a feel-good society. And I ain't here to bust anybody's bubble. I'm going to tell you what. This ain't no feel-good society right now. This is the gates of hell and darkness trying to prevail on us. And we got to use our authority that God's given us on the tip of our tongue to spread His Word and to shut the mouths of them. Because He's the only one that can do it. Amen. Amen.
I mean, they disrespected the flag that a bunch of us have fought for. They disrespected, they've tried to force this flag and this flag on us. We ain't judging none of them people because sin, sin, and God's displeased with every dad Jim bit of it. They ain't no just one sin's worse than another. No, they all they all equal on the same playing field. Sin, sin. You say, but yeah, man, he murdered or raped a child. Hey, it's still sin. We're to pray for that and that family and those. Instead of all this darkness, if we, sit, we hear it, we start praying on it. Watch God change this world. But it's going to start right here in His house. And who is the church? Who is it? Y'all are. Y'all are the body of Christ. We all are the body of Christ. And He wants us to go out and rejoice and be glad. Because he sent his son to die on Calvary to save a wretched sinner like me and this girl I'm married to. And all of y'all, he's, he's put blessings on our lives. I'm going to tell y'all what, how good he's been to me. I, I said, they called and asked me about putting a revival on up in my house in a field. We had about $350 in my ministry account and that was it. I said, well, if the Lord's in this, we'll do it. Because he'll let you know if he's in it. I went up to the mailbox on the four-wheeler. I come back. I had to get my five-year-old granddaughter to ride me. Because I was crying. I was praising God. The first check to come in for this revival was for $3,000. <laughs> it paid for the 30 by 40 tent. It paid for the toilets. It's paid for the food. It's paid for the hundred chairs. It's paid for everything. And I ain't got to worry about nothing because God done sent another thousand on top of that to make sure everything was covered. And I have not asked the first person for anything. That's how he says, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Ye that have faith, I will move mountains for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as I was saying in Revelation the persecuted church the lenient church the compromising church just like on the compromising these things said the son of God who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are, and his feet are like fine brass if I know works, charity, and service, and faith, then I know my God is in charge. Patient that works, the last more than the first. Anyway, it turns around. And it talks about, in chapter 3, the lifeless church. And then it talks on in 3 about the obedient church. That's where your disciples that walk out this door and go fishing every day for Jesus. He wants to make fishermen and women of men and women in here. You say, well, what's a woman's place? Well, there's plenty of women. I'm going to tell you about the woman's role. Where were the men at the, perse at, at the crucifixion? Where were the men at crucifixion? Who was there? Who was there with Jesus? That's right, the women. And one man. Who was that one man? John. That's right. One man. So everybody's got a key role. Everybody's got a key role. Who did Jesus tell when he arose? Who did he get tell to go tell the disciples where to meet him? Who was it? It wasn't uh, no caterpillar. But then also he goes in here and he talks about the obedient church. These things he says are holy. And that is true. He that hath the key of David. Well, David had the key to his heart. Y'all know that. David. Then it goes on down in Revelation chapter 3. And it talks about a lukewarm church. And it says, Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with thy goods, I have need of nothing. Knock my heart pill alarm off. Tell me to take my heart pills. But it says I 
where was that? It says, So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and I have increased with goods and have need of nothing, <laughs> and knowest that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment. In other words, in white apparel. And he says in verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, in verse 20, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to bow your head, sister, if you can put a little music on for me. I don't... Huh? Okay. Maestro. Put a little worship. Whatever you feel like playing. I don't know how y'all do it here, but this, I'm trying to do what the Lord's telling me to do right now. Because it said some people... They said they need to rise up to the occasion today. They need to ask for boldness. Y'all, I'm just a messenger boy that travels around the country praising what my God has done for me because he has breathed life into me since so five after my heart quit working. He's breathed life into my son after he was dead. He's breathed life into my wife. He said, I'm in the miracle working business today. He said, if you have all or need, if you will come before me, I will give you rest. Well, I'm going to tell y'all right now, while he plays some music softly, if anyone would like to come to the altar and give any problems that they've been financially fighting this week because there's financial burdens, there's been some people having a hard time just feeding themselves. Uh, God knows your heart, just like this song's played. He wants to see, are you willing to step out and be bold today? It don't matter if you've been going to church with these people all your life. It don't matter. He, he sent me down here because he's got some purpose and witnesses for people to go out and do the job for him that he wants done. And I'd be honored to pray with anyone that would want to come up to the altar and, and just... It, I can't do anything for you, but he says if you get on your knees and go to the Father and ask in the name of Jesus, he said, I shall meet all of your needs. All I can do is pray in agreement with you. I cannot lead you to the Lord. I cannot walk you up here and tell you how to get saved because the Holy Spirit does that. If you have a private prayer request, slip your hand up and I'll acknowledge that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's what we need to do. Cut it up just a little bit, brother. Do you really want to see him? Because he's coming soon. He's going to be busting that eastern sky wide open. And we're going to hear a trumpet sound. And glorious what a day that shall be. Those that are ready. But for those that know not, our family members, our children, our loved ones, there's some, somebody in here has really worked, been having a burden about their children. I'm going to tell you that right now. And they need to take a knee right where they are and just give it all to God. Yeah. I mean, just whatever's going on with a younger person that they're having a struggle with, it might be a grandchild or somebody's got a big struggle going on. And they need to take the person's hand next to them and just say, pray with me in a grits. God wants to move in some hearts in here today. But he says, get out of my way and let me enter. Amen. Sip from my cup and you shall overrun it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life.
Y'all just talk to the Lord for a minute longer because it's between you and Him. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I have to answer for everything I do, every breath of my day. Just as you do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord, and I just thank you for being God who sits on the throne. I want to sing hallelujah and praise to you for the time we've had to come to your house and worship as the body of Christ. Lord, I want to thank you for the new people which I've already met. Help me with names because you know I'm very bad with that. That's why you gave me a smart wife. So, Lord, I ask right now that you bless this congregation. But, Lord, most of all, I ask that you take, let them take this literature that they go out of here with today and let them share it with someone, even if they just have to give it to them and ask them to come to church. Lord, you told me you want to see this church filled up and to talk to the body of Christ. Well, I'm talking to the body of Christ. And, Lord, I ask you, because you, your pastors work so hard, And that's all pastors' visions, to see their church flourish and to see disciples being made and coming to the altar and lives being changed and Satan losing battle after battle. So, Lord, if you will, be with Pastor Kenny and his family as they're out in California. Give them a hedge of protection. Thank you for getting them out there safely. Lord, I... Going to go ahead and bless the food that I told us on the table. I see it back there. Bless the hands that prepared it and those that are fixing to eat it to strengthen our body and our body for your glory. But use us somehow today in this week to bring somebody back with us next week so that when Kenny comes back the third week, your house can be full. And that's my humble prayer to you today that you ignite everyone to go forward and proclaim the gospel that you have freely given us and you've taken us out of a mire clay and put us on the rock you put us on today. And I want to praise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.